stop. A straight punches. Here you see a really perfect example of a Floyd Mayweather's speed and skill. He moves from a punch, counters and lands a punch, and gets away from another punch, all at the same, with same motion. In two fights against Manny Pacquiao in 2004 and early 2008, Juan Manuel Marquez gave Pacquiao all he could handle. A draw and a one-point split decision loss. Yeah, so Ma far, Marquez has been completely dominated by Floyd Mayweather. Harold, how do you have it for six? Look at him, six to nothing, 60 to 53, Floyd Mayweather. You know, Jim, he's landed that left jab beautifully, landed that straight right hand, the lead right hand, landed the left hooks. I mean, the only thing I see Marquez landing is an occasional harmless flurry that's really not doing a lot of damage. I mean, basically, this is Floyd Mayweather's fight. And, you know, I'm not a big numbers guy, but if you look at numbers, Floyd seven points ahead on my card, which means that he won the fight, unless one Manuel Marquez gets a 10-8 round somewhere along the line the rest of the fight. Six to nothing, Mayweather. I think Marquez will take a 10-9 round at some point. Hasn't seemed to win one yet. <laughs> Hasn't really been close. Let him go, let him go, let him go, stop, stop. Okay. We are told by interpreter Jerry Elia that between rounds six and seven, referee Tony Weeks went to Marquez's corner and actually asked if he wanted to continue. The answer, of course, was yes. He hasn't been punished so badly that he deserves to be out of the fight on a physical basis. He's just not in it tactically. Unveiling the jab again, and it seems to rock Marquez back on his heels. There's a left hook that finally landed on the fence. Finally, Marquez got a clean shot to Mayweather's 10, and of course, it seemed to do no great damage. No, no, it didn't. Now he I smiles it, at the uppercut. It created more excitement with the crowd than it did the impact on Floyd. said earlier it's like two cobras squaring off but so far it's been more like a cobra and his prey Mayweather pitching an absolute shutout landing his right hand and his left hook with impunity smiling stepping back Marquez trying so hard and getting practically nowhere Marquez had his best exchange in that round but P. Diddy reflects the enthusiasm of all the Mayweather rooters on the crowd for the brilliance of Floyd so far. You've got to be more continuous. Up top, you have nothing. Bring your hands up, fine. He's laughing, he's smiling at you because you bring your hands down. And he attacks you, you understand? Bring your hands up and throw your hands and use the combinations. Well, let's take a look at where Floyd Mayweather's punches have gone tonight against Juan Manuel Marquez. 17 left hooks to the body, or left hands to the body probably, right hands, a few of them, and almost all the rest of the landed punches to Marquez's head. When you throw body shots, you're taking a little bit more of a chance that you're going to get countered, so if you're completely dominating a guy upstairs, and you don't really feel a need, feel a need to invest in trying to wear him down physically, then you don't bother to take too many chances throwing body shots, and that's the way Mayweather has treated this so far. CompuBox numbers through the seventh round. Mayweather 136 out of 232. That's a 60% connect percentage. Marquez has only landed 40 punches in seven rounds. That's even fewer than Rocky Juarez landed against Chris John in a preliminary fight here in which Juarez shockingly wasn't really in it. Mayweather has done the same thing to Marquez. And even the punches he landed were glazing punches. It was half half deflected punches. He hasn't landed that many clean punches. His old side punches out. 
one left hook, a couple of right hands. Other than that, practically nothing. Nate Weather has done more or less whatever he wanted to do. So he's beating up the lightweight champion who spent most of his career at a featherweight division level. Sitting across from us, Shane Mosley, a true welterweight with muscle who has been craving a fight with Floyd Mayweather for about eight years and hasn't been able to get it. Or Manny Pacquiao recently and couldn't get that one either. Why Shane Mosley is sort of frozen out of discussions concerning a super fight with Mayweather and Pacquiao is beyond me. I think that a super fight, the biggest one you can make in boxing, involves any permutation of those three. Good news. I was told by a friend who's sitting across the ring that prior to the opening bell tonight, Mayweather winked at Mosley. Mosley took that as a sign that maybe Floyd is considering fighting it. the import of my statement that he's beating up the lightweight champion who spent most of his career as a featherweight is that Floyd is now seemingly a natural welterweight fighting as a welterweight. He is a natural, and that's what I keep looking at. I'm still seeing, to me, a junior lightweight and a welterweight and a good welterweight. And that's why I just find it so difficult, you know, to really get too excited when Marquez does do things. Because he just he's not strong enough physically to be effective on the board. Now, there was a lot of this in the De La Hoya fight which prompted some over-enthusiastic Delaware rooms to believe that he was making a mark in the fight. But you saw Mayweather blocking the body shot with his arm. And there's Shane Mosley. Still so great, brilliant destruction of Antonio Margarito earlier this year. Maybe the greatest performance of his career. So eager to fight Floyd Mayweather in what many see as perhaps the most physically imposing battle Floyd could choose in this weight class. All right. He's gonna start throwing some lead right hand on his motherfucking hand. Or countering, okay? So he's ready to go now. He's about ready to You doing what you're doing to him. Heard this good one. Come on, you got good conditioning for this. Don't let him lead you. How you feeling, Juan? Good. Everything's okay. Well come on, use your combinations, Juan. Combinations, combinations to the body, to the head. To the body, to the body. <laughs> Emmanuel, is it embarrassing for Marquez yeah. that he's looking for the moral victory of winning a round? Yes, it is, but it's just pretty much what I expected to be all out of sorts. But it's, uh, it, he's fighting a good fight, but he's he fighting with Pacquiao, he's fighting the guy his size, and it was a great fight. But now it's, that's why we have weight division. That's why you have 130 pounds, 135, 140, 147. And, and, uh, and, and that's why we have those divisions. And Marquez's style, as many, many people anticipated, though I was not one of them. His style is not translating at a heavier weight the way Pacquiao's style has translated at a heavier weight. That also may have something to do with the selection of opponents, where Pacquiao well, fought a drained De La Hoya and a yeah, severely yeah. weathered Ricky Hatton, and, and Marquez has to fight Floyd Mayweather, who then refused to drain himself at all and came in at the exact weight he wanted to fight at. Well, I think it was smart. A lot of time fighters said, well, I'm going to make sure that no one says I beat up a little guy, so I'm going to come in smaller than him, or smaller as he's like Oscar did. So, you know, I feel comfortable at this weight where I'm, I'm not going in a lighter. You know, pay him the money. And, and he kept his main natural strength. He's fighting at his natural weight, which is probably about 152 tonight. Which left hook landed inside for Mayweather. Marquez tries three of them upstairs. 
Yeah, but he can't handle Mayweather's speed. Now, Mayweather's starting to step it up a little bit more of a variety of things, and the speed is going to bother him even more in the going down the stretch. We're seeing how much difficulty Marquez is having against a markedly bigger man in Mayweather. Yep. November 14, Pacquiao prepares to fight what would seem to be a markedly bigger man in I, Miguel Cotto. I, I think we're a lot of time maybe making a mistake in that, too. We can keep looking at DeMarty names and keep looking at those weight divisions, disregarding the weight division. Cotto is going to be a much tougher fighter, I think, than people expect. Yeah, will the result of this, if it sustains, create more enthusiasm for Cotto's chances against Pacquiao? It definitely will. But see what wouldn't Pacquiao to match Pacquiao has a rhythm though. He's a little different where Marquez stands more flat footed. Pacquiao moves, dances, he catches you with counter punches in and out. He's a little bit more difficult guy to fight. He's and, truly and he's dynamic. A, and yeah, he's a better puncher and he took his punch up yes. with him. Yes, he did. But I still think welterweight, I just don't see it that much. I mean, I, I didn't consider that fight beating Oscar really a welterweight, but it wasn't Manny's fault. He did what he was supposed to do. Brilliant combination by Mayweather. If that didn't hurt Marquez, I'm not sure what would. Marquez steps up and answers the challenge. I have a feeling we'll see what will coming up right here. Marquez is starting to take the kind of chances that could get him knocked up. And Mayweather seems to relish that. The steam seems to be gone out of uh, Juan Manuel Marquez's punches at this point in the fight. That's it. If there was any to begin with. Come on, you've got to be lively. You've got to be lively, sharp. On the inside, you're not throwing punches. Just, just, just there. Throw the combinations, Juan, please. 10, 11, 12, throw the combinations, please. Bring your hands back. And bench your waist. Go. Keep doing that what you just did this round. Here you see a classic display of the hand speed of Floyd Mayweather compared to Marquez. He lands two clean, beautiful, perfectly timed punches right away as soon as Marquez moved right into range. And there's nothing that Marquez can really do to stop that.